Hey guys, James here today, and welcome to another Sims 4 tutorial. This one is how rooms work and understanding the rooms in Sims 4. A lot of people seem to have a few issues here and there, uh, and it mostly comes from not sort of understanding how this new system works, because we're much more used to the classic Sims 1 to 3 build mode. You know, just build, build walls like this, and then you, you have a room. Whereas in Sims 3... And prior to that, obviously, two and one, you would not automatically get a ceiling and you would not automatically get a floor. It would just be walls. Uh, but obviously that has changed with the uh, advances in The Sims 4. And with that comes a lot of different things that you sort of need to uh, pick up and learn as you go through them. Uh, so this video is going to be covering a few things. How to fix broken rooms. I say broken with uh, air quotes because... They kind of are, but they kind of aren't, once you understand it. Uh, how to uh, make, like, sort of open balconies on upper levels. So, on the second story of a house, I get that question a lot. And there was something else that I've forgotten, but hopefully we'll cover it soon. <laughs> uh, so, right, so this room is perfectly fine. There's no problems with that at all. What are you talking about? But, as soon as I... Okay, so if I wanted to, you know, like... Okay, so I've got a rectangular room. And I want to add just a little bit of detail here. I just want to pop out this bit of the room. So, you know, previous games, you'd hold down control and you just build a little section there. But then... Oh, uh-oh. It hasn't become a room because if you select it, this is still a room. And this is no longer... This isn't a room. Um, now, the problem... What, what you've done, essentially, is because rooms don't need to have walls. Uh, as you can see, if you click on the walls in a room, you can remove the walls. But, you'll notice that this is still considered a room. It is still 100% a room. Undoubtedly, it is still a room. And that, that's where the problem lies in it, the game not considering this part of the room. Because, you know, they're two separate entities. Uh, so, let's just put those walls back by undoing that. So, if we wanted to make an extension like that, and say we've just done it like this, what we can do, quite simply, is click on our existing room, and you'll see a new little drag point now. We can just drag that into that section, and it will become a part of the whole room. Uh, if we want to go back to scratch, and just this point here, if we just select the room tool, drag a new room there, we can do it that way, and remove the wall. And there we go, we have a whole uh, single room that way as well. So that's something you've got to kind of understand. Rooms do not need walls. So, for example, this is considered a room. It's just a flat square. And there's nothing else. But it is considered a room because you can click on the spaces where walls would go, build a wall. You could build a fence there too if you wanted. Um, remove the fence and you can build a wall. That's something else that I don't know if a lot of people know. I guess you would probably pick it up though. Uh, and then there you go, you have a room. Uh, if you have built a room this way and there's no ceiling, if you go onto the upper level, the, the level above the room, you'll see a yellow highlight once you've selected the room. If the room isn't selected, you won't see it. So select the room and you'll see a yellow highlight and build ceiling. Um, so that's sort of the basics of understanding rooms. And again, if I wanted to make a change, say, you know, I want to have a diagonal part to this room for whatever reason. This is a little bit more sort of in your face and a bit more annoying to fix. So now I've got a diagonal section. These are three individual walls not considered a room. And this is still considered a room. Uh, we can't do the simple trick of just extending it because it will actually just change the shape and not work properly. Uh, so if you have a large sort of diagonal addition to that, I would recommend either not doing it that way or using the sort of diagonal uh, room tool. So we've got a diagonal piece here. We can just drag it out and drag these pieces into place. And you'll notice as soon as I put this back uh, where that original sort of cut was made, that will become a room and this is a room. And now simply all we have to do is remove the walls in between. So we can just remove those ones there. And then that will now become one larger room. Although if you want to do it a little bit easier, I would probably recommend not doing it that way and... Don't make a cut in the walls first. Leave the existing room. Build the bit you want. And then that will become a room automatically. And then, again, you just remove the walls in between if you do not want them there. Uh, and that will join the two rooms together. And you now have a different shaped room. So that is kind of how they work in terms of making adjustments to sizes and changing the shapes in, I guess, the old-fashioned way, you know, in sort of Sims 2, Sims 3 way. Uh, so there you go, that's sort of how you do that kind of stuff with rooms and how you make adjustments to them. Now, if we were on the second level, let's just build a nice room up here for us. And let's say we have some stairs coming up. Uh, right over here. So now we're going we're gonna to look at how to do sort of balconies now. So we have our stairs coming up there, and you know, generally in, in past games, let's just get some windows in here so we have a little bit of light. Um, uh, there they are. Yeah, just get a bit of light in here on both levels so we can get a nice view. Uh, it's not going to be a pretty house. I will put this house up in the gallery in case you want to download it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, okay. Yeah, so, anyways, in past games, if you wanted to make a balcony, it was very simple. You just go into the floor tool 
and you'd hold down control and remove it. But oh, oh no, it doesn't do that in this game. Uh, so, you guessed it, you're going to have to make another room or a separation of the room. So if we want to remove this part here and have a double wide balcony, first of all, that window is going to be in the way. So let's uh, move that. Okay, if I could select the window first, that'd be good. Okay, let's go on this side. Okay, it's not letting me select. Okay. <laughs> If I could select the window, that'd be great. There we go. Okay, it didn't like me selecting it in that mode. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the wall tool. We're going to we're going to use the wall. Oh, actually, no, we'll just use a fence because we're going to be using a fence anyways. We're going to use the fence tool in the place fences by drawing, not the uh, replace fences button. And make sure you're on this top button here. So we're going to draw out this section here and cut it there. Uh, this did not make it did not make a cut, which I assumed it would. Uh, and that. <laughs> So this can sometimes be a bit confusing, but if we drag it across there, see now, okay, let me just go back because that might have been confusing to see. All right, so initially what I did is I just did it straight up to the stairs and left a gap and the game does not consider that as a separate room. But if we instead drag the fence all the way across the stairs and you'll see that the green boxes highlight, that has actually now created two separate rooms. So now we have a smaller room there and a larger room here. Uh, and in within that smaller room, if we click the flooring, we can remove the floor. And there you go, you've got the stairs coming up with a balcony, and it works perfectly fine. Of course, you can extend this room just like you would any other room in the game, and you have a larger balcony. So it's it's kind of, it works like that. You've got to think about it, if you want to, say, so on, on the second level and third level, you got to think about, it, if you want to make a balcony, what you got to do is separate it with fences first, select the room, then select the floor, and remove it like that way. So now we can have a little bridge going across there for some reason. For, for no reason, really, and do it that way, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, I believe the other topic I wanted to talk about was moving how the entire house, uh, and it's pretty simple, and I decided I'd put this in the same video. First of all, uh, first of all, moving a single room, you guys may already know that, you just click on this little move button when you select a room. So we're actually going to intersect this room and make it part of the whole house. Uh, we'll just make this look a little bit not as bad. It's, it's still pretty bad. It's not the point. All right, so now we've got this whole house, if you can even call this a house. Uh, if you want to move the entire thing, obviously you can't just select it like this. Uh, you have to go up to the, the central menu up the top here, and there's a button that says Move House, or you can click the U button on your keyboard. Uh, and then that will select the entire, well, a, a structure that is completely connected. And we can move the house around by clicking the Move tool, and you can rotate it using the period and comma keys on your keyboard, just like you'd rotate an object. Or I believe you can click and drag. No, you cannot click and drag. Okay. I assumed you could. But anyways, there you go. So you can put it down just like that. Uh, now, this does not move. If you say, say if we had a separate room over here, which is why I initially merged the two. This will not move uh, the separate building. So these are considered two separate houses by the move tool, whether by the house move tool. So just keep that in mind if you're like, oh, why isn't it moving this, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That is why. Uh, so that's kind of like a basic understanding of how the new build tools work. I, I also realize this took me a little while to get this video out, but I myself, I'm still trying to sort of wrap my head around it and get fully used to it before I before I want to start doing a ton of tutorials. I want to make sure I, I understand the topic myself entirely. I mean, for example, you saw I made a mistake with the, uh, the fence initially there. Um, but yeah, that's it uh, for this tutorial, guys. I hope this helped you out uh, in your building endeavors. Uh, and I will be sure to do more tutorials in the near future. If you have any questions, any suggestions for new tutorials, things you don't understand, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below requesting a tutorial on said topic. Um, yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time and have an awesome day.